So you were talking about your, uh, your typical uh, customers and I would love for you to tell me one or two stories of uh, interesting and creative ways that uh, you found to help them harness the business intelligence from their own data. Sure, absolutely. Uh, I can give you a great example of a client we have called fab.com. Uh, fab is a, a really popular uh, uh, e-commerce site that uh, kind of started out as a daily deal site and it's really evolving into something that uh, I know uh, the long-term plan is to kind of rival amazon.com and really go after e-commerce uh, thinking in very big ways about, about changing the way that people buy. Uh, and it's actually currently uh, one of the, if not the fastest growing e-commerce businesses um, in the world. Um, and Fab has been a user of RJ Metrics since very, very early on. Uh, and one thing that is, is noteworthy about how they use our products um, to understand their own customers is that uh, kind of end-to-end -end in their organization, it's used uh, not just on the kind of customer analysis side, but also on the strategic side. So Fab recently raised a, a very sizable uh, venture capital round and they use the data from our own dashboards to basically uh, inform venture capitalists and investors <coughs> about the value of the typical fab customer and when you think about that value uh, not only does it demonstrate to investors that there's a very large amount of uh, kind of value wrapped up in any incremental customer but they can use that within the organization to really level set for how valuable customers are which translates into how much money you should be willing to spend to acquire a customer which might not be as evident as you think. You know, They might spend $40 on their first purchase, but in reality, if they're likely to make 10 purchases within their first 20 weeks, then you should be willing to spend a lot more than $40 to acquire them. Um, and what you can do with a product like RJ Metrics is basically do a deep dive into the data and separate customers into cohorts that are similar. So whether it's based on when they originally joined or the referral source they came from or the first product that they purchased, you can gain a much deeper understanding of what a customer like this who behaves in this way looks like. And when you're talking about e-commerce, some of the advantages are, number one, you have all this data because your website wouldn't work if you didn't. Uh, your back-end database tends to already include a lot of this really key information. Uh, and number two, there's a lot of that data. So there tends to be, you know, this is not 10, 20 customers that we're talking about. This is 10, 20,000. In some of our clients' cases, it's 10, 20 million. Uh, and really, with uh, a volume of data at that size, you can get a very, very high amount of statistical confidence that a person who fits a specific profile that makes him very, very specialized is quite likely to do an incremental thing in a certain amount of time or make an incremental purchase in a certain way. Um, and when you have that level of knowledge, you can really gain a much deeper understanding as to uh, you know, not just the uh, kind of the current value of a customer, but the potential lifetime value of a customer. Um, and being able to do that really gives you a lot of power in terms of decisions around customer acquisition, around merchandising, uh, and around strategic things like raising capital, because you can really demonstrate uh, with statistical confidence on paper that your business is worth a certain amount and your customers are, are of a certain value. Um, and that's a, you know, that's a level of analysis that frankly for companies in the startup stage or the expansion stage really wasn't available uh, or, or practical to run even as recently as five or ten years ago. So it's interesting because I'm hearing several things that solve problems even for other organizations, not just startups, right? Sure. Um, you know, kind of how do I start segmenting my customer base in a way that is based upon their purchase patterns and uh, something that I would like to uh, get your take on, which is intent. Are mm -hmm. they about to purchase something else? And how can you tell that from the data? And you know what kind of confidence you have in that? And also the ability to um, look at um, the um, customer acquisition cost as an investment sure. uh, for the business. You know the the ability to bounce those those numbers against each other and say, you know what, we should be investing more in these customers because they are going to be more loyal to us. Sure. So. Yeah, I, I mean, when you start talking about intent, you get into a really interesting kind of art versus science uh, yeah. debate where, you know, we, I can say with a lot of confidence that there's a, there's a statistical likelihood of 74% that this person, you know, tomorrow will come in and uh, buy a New York Yankees hat off of your website. The question is, uh, does that person even know that they're going to do it yet? And kind of where, where is the origin of, of this intent that I can, I can statistically demonstrate? Uh, but ultimately, there's a, there's a psychological effect there as well. And there's, there are 
uh, factors that uh, are kind of these external variables that you may not actually have a grasp on, um, and they could be you know lingering variables that aren't collected within your data, but that are somehow kind of passively represented in the data points or the attributes that you do have. Is this something that um, do you connect with social media? And is this something that if you don't do it directly, you see organizations? Uh, you're talking about startups and tech companies where they're starting with marketing. And, and social media baked into their communication program because right. you know that's how these people communicate anyway with their customers. Sure. And so are they? That's something that I am very I'm working with and I'm curious about is being able to tie in the kind of things that people say, the qualitative data yeah. from social media, from those conversations into the data which tells you there is intent there and once you start having this level of uh, dialogue back, back and forth, then you can take it to the next level. Sure, and you know, there's a really good question about being, you know, kind of being pre proactive or being reactive in that regard. So the case that I see much uh, more frequently is people trying to be proactive and they're going out on social media and trying to basically seed that intent. So if the intent is not there or, you know, it's a coin flip, there's a 50% chance that this person is- Inception, is right? In. Exactly, right. So it's, 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 it's trying, to, trying to plant that inception. Uh, so uh, effectively what you're trying to do is use social media to, to uh, create some form of intent. Um, but what you're mentioning, which I think is really the more sophisticated way of doing it, that frankly I, I don't see that commonly uh, among startups, but that I think will, with the, with the integration of products like ours, kind of back-end data and, and social media marketing strategies, I think you're able to see more and more. And we do have some customers uh, who are being enabled by, by the analytics that we provide to do this kind of thing is, you know, you identify those customers who actually are uh, more likely to respond to a particular type of marketing, a particular type of message, and then you use social media as the channel to deliver that message. So rather than you know uh, email blasting your 200 million uh, customers in, in a single email, selling every single one of them uh, you know uh, a very particular product that might be you know oriented towards someone who recently purchased another product or a particular gender or a particular age, you can be a lot more intelligent about you know the likelihood of these specific. 2,000 or 20,000 customers to make a purchase like this is, is substantially higher. Um, and rather than kind of wearing out your welcome in terms of people's inboxes or people's uh, just kind of spheres of awareness, you can be a lot more targeted. Uh, and not only does that save you dollars because you're buying less media and kind of throwing it away on less targeted people, but you are resisting fatigue um, and kind of the brand fatigue of having you know, having your uh, brand's name slapped in front of people on, on too regular a basis, uh, there certainly is such a thing as, as people kind of uh, feeling that if they're mistargeted too frequently, that it's kind of a, a negative affinity that starts to happen where you get frustrated with the, the broader brand.